Today, I want to write a test for uh, displaying an image on a screen with Cypress. And to show you what I mean, I have this form here that can do file uploads. So I'm going to select this uh, Woods file. And uh, I'm going to submit this form. And you can see that the file displays. So uh, this file is a file that is uploaded to S3. Uh, and so just to show you, if I open it in a new tab, uh, we can see that this this is an image that lives on S3. And I have uh, this test right here for that page. So if I go and I run this, it's going to do all the steps we just did. And it's going to have an assertion at the very end that makes sure that our image is visible. And you can see I'm using this attach file command and I'm using this woods JPEG and this file uh, is right here in our fixtures directory and we can use it in our Cypress test. So this test is working, it's passing, but there's a flaw in it. And if I come over to the S3 console, I can show you what I mean. I'm going to add a uh, bucket policy to the bucket where we're uploading files. And this policy has uh, the deny effect on the get object command. And so this is going to prevent anyone from getting objects out of our bucket. So I'm just going to commit this policy and you'll see if I go back to this image, uh, I can no longer download it. I get access denied and that's because of the policy we just added. So given that we just changed our bucket policy, what do you think is going to happen to our test? So that's interesting. Our, uh, our test passes, but our UI is clearly broken. We uploaded an image, but that image didn't display correctly. We got this broken image. So really, I would want some feedback from our test here that our UI is broken, and I would expect to get a test failure. And so I want this test to fail, and this should be visible assertion here is just not enough. So let's go ahead and improve this. So instead of asserting that the image tag is visible, uh, there's some other things we can do to make sure that our image correctly loaded. And one of those is to test the height and the width of the browser rendered image. And so we can use uh, should, and we're gonna get this image tag. And we're gonna expect uh, the image tags natural width to equal 2000. And that's just the width of our uh, Woods JPEG. So let's save this. And this is definitely a step in the right direction. We can see that we expected 2000, but we got zero back. So we now have a failing test. And for good measure, let's copy this and also assert against the uh, natural height. And the height of this image is 3000 pixels. Okay, test still failing. So I would expect that when we re-enable our S3 bucket, that this test would pass. So I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna delete the policy. And just to be sure that our S3 bucket is back to its original configuration, I'm gonna reload this image and perfect, it renders. Okay, so let's go ahead and rerun our test with a working S3 bucket. And there we go, our test passes. And so this is good. We're actually getting feedback that the image is rendering and our whole uh, UI is working. So if anything ever gets misconfigured in the future, uh, we're gonna get a test failure that lets us know. This is definitely an improvement, but I think we can go a little further. This 2000 and 3000, the height and width, they, they're magic numbers. You know, if we ever came in and we dropped a new file or like we resized Woods JPEG, the test would fail, but this UI would still work. And so I would view that as a false negative. And so I, I kind of want to make my test robust to those sort of situations. And so one way we can do that is by adding a step that reads the height and the width from the fixture file on disk. So uh, we're going to create a, a then block with our image. And here we are going to open our Woods JPEG file, and then we're going to get its content. And so now that we have the content from the fixture image that's on disk, we can get its height and width 
and compare it to the height and the width of the image that's rendered in the browser. So the way we do that is with a, um, an in-memory image. So we're gonna create a new image and we're gonna set that fixture images source to the base64 content from our fixture on disk. Now, one quick thing, I uh, just messed up the parens up here, so I'm gonna get those fixed. Okay, so now we have an in-memory version of our fixture image, and we want to compare it to the image in the browser. And we're gonna use uh, the fixture images on load callback to do that. So once the fixture image is loaded, uh, we're gonna run these assertions. Now, instead of hard coding the 2000, uh, we can use our in-memory image. So we'll do fixture image natural width and the fixture images natural height. And so over in Cypress, you can see I got two more assertions and they're comparing the natural width and natural height. Now, one thing about this is you'll notice that these two assertions aren't nested under this step like the previous assertions above it. And that's because this on load callback is asynchronous. And so it is happening out of band. It is happening outside of the Cypress step. So we actually wanna tell Cypress that um, it should wait until this fixture image loads and we run these assertions. And we can do that uh, with a promise. So we're gonna return a new promise. And inside that promise, we are gonna load our image run our two assertions, and then resolve the promise. And so now all these assertions are happening in the same step, and we've just eliminated a, a potential race condition here. So now that our test is using the image on files height and width to do the assertion, uh, we can go ahead and we can delete these hard-coded values. And then also too, because we're asserting against the height and width, uh, we actually don't care about the image being visible or not. This code down here is enough to let us know that our image is rendered. So let's save all this. Yes, it's great. Our test passes and we're only running the two assertions we need to know that the image is loaded. So I'm gonna run this a few more times. And that's weird. I got a failure. I got expect zero to equal 2000 which if I look at my test, that means I got expect the image's natural width, which was zero to equal the fixture's natural width, which is, is 2000. And so we actually have another race condition here. And that is due to the fact that we're reading this fixture image from disk and this fixture image and all this code in here and this on load callback, this happens so quickly because we're reading it from disk that uh, this assertion runs before the browser has even uh, had a chance to download it. And so the browser thinks the image has a width of zero. And so, yeah, you get this test failure. And so what we wanna do to fix this is we don't wanna run any of this code until we know the browser image has been successfully downloaded. And we can do that with uh, a should command. And so we're gonna say should, and we're gonna get the, uh, the image again. And we're gonna expect that the image uh, is complete. And this just is gonna let us know that the browser has downloaded the image. And so now you can see, no matter how many times I rerun this test, it is always gonna be green. Uh, we're not gonna get that race condition with loading the fixture file before the browser is finished downloading the image. So this, this test is enough to uh, give me complete confidence that the image is loading and it's rendering. Uh, the only problem that I have with it is that when I open this file, uh, this is just a lot of code. Um, yeah, I don't really know what all this code is doing at, at first glance. So I think it would be nicer if we had another API where we got our image and we were able to call something like is fixture image and pass in uh, Woods JPEG. And we can write these custom commands in Cypress. So let's go ahead and start implementing this API. 
So let's open our commands file. And this is the command we want to write. And I'm going to use this command template. So let's start filling this out. And so our command name is going to be is fixture image. And then for this code, uh, let's grab and paste it in. And so now we want to replace these hard coded bits from our test with variables that are going to work from, from anywhere this command is invoked. And so instead of using this data test image, we can use uh, the subject. And this subject right here is the thing we're chaining off of. So this is going to allow our command to read what came before it. And so we're just going to work off this subject. And in order to do that in Cypress, uh, we have to wrap it. And then down here, we don't always want to load Woods JPEG. We want to have the user be able to specify which fixture image to load. And so we can use this argument here for that. And so we'll just call this fixture image. And then we will load the fixture image that's passed into our command. So that should be it. The rest of this code doesn't have any hard coded bits. And back in our test, we can delete all this. And let's uncomment this line. And there we go, our test passes. Pretty cool. So I'm I'm really happy with this refactor. Uh, this test is kind of exactly at the level that I want to approach my tests at. I'm not describing any implementation details. I've hidden all those inside of the command. Uh, if you look at the steps in this test, they're exactly what I would describe to a user to uh, to know that the page is working, right? If a user told me they could do every one of these steps, I would say, great, the page is working, my app is tested. So I really like that we were able to take this command to actually compare our image on screen to the fixture image on disk, um, but we don't have to expose all that in this test. When I have commands like this, um, I know I can go off and write like 15 different tests like this with different images, and I don't get bogged down by any of the details. You know, I also know too that if I ever misconfigure S3 or just break anything with like uploading or the bucket permissions, uh, I'm going to get instant feedback from this test. Uh, so I get a nice high level test that's testing a ton of different details. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about this uh, in the comments below. Thanks.